watch how they catch me a roller Oh, he like it, run him over Fuck the set block, I'm the owner I'm smoking on dead house, ain't no folder He tried to run, but I'm clicking his over Oh, he with his kid, then I'm kicking his shoulder Fuck a job off What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel Today, I wanted to have a conversation about Clint Kubiak As you can see, the video format is different But this is what it's gonna be like when I put out videos on Monday or Tuesday So, uh, stay tuned for more of these, but Let's hop into it. As the New Orleans Saints head into week three, I feel that it is necessary to talk about our beloved Clint Kubiak. The thing about this entire situation is that many Saints fans think that we've cracked the case and that we've hit the jackpot. But Clint Kubiak showing promise is the start of a very complicated decision that the Saints are going to have to make down the road. Before we talk about that decision, let's get to know Clint Kubiak and see what he's been doing over his career and how the Saints offensive numbers reflect on him early in this season. In 2016, Clint Kubiak got his first what I would say real job in the NFL as the Denver Broncos offensive assistant. Of course, he had NCAA experience, but moving to the NFL in any capacity is a completely different ballgame. He had a short stint with the Minnesota Vikings before going back to the University of Kansas to coach wide receivers in 2015, but this was his first like actual seated spot that he got. So let's talk about Denver. Now, I will be the first to admit that what Clint Kubiak was brought into was not really the best situation as far as Denver goes. The Denver Broncos came into the 2016 season as the defending Super Bowl champions, but went through something very similar to what us Saints fans just went through. All-time great quarterback Peyton Manning retired. This created a difficult situation not only for Denver Broncos head coach Gary Kubiak, who signed his son Clint onto his offensive staff, but the entire Denver Broncos organization. Clint Kubiak was in the position to coach up Trevor Simeon, who got his first shot as an NFL QB at the start of the 2016 season. Interestingly, this would be Trevor Simeon's best season as an NFL quarterback with 3,401 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. He never played that well again. In 2017, Kubiak would assume the position of Denver's sole quarterback coach. Instead of him, Bill Musgrave was promoted to offensive coordinator. Yeah, it just wasn't a great situation for Kubiak, but he didn't do bad considering his role. In 2019, Clint Kubiak was hired by the Minnesota Vikings. He was working under Kevin Stefanski and Mike Zimmer. More on uh, Mike Zimmer in a nice full circle moment later. I'm just gonna say he was on Dallas when, when we just kicked the shit out of them like uh, yesterday. From 2019 to 2021, Kubiak helped Kirk Cousins turn in two of the best statistical seasons in his entire career. Kirk racked up 4,265 yards, 35 touchdowns, 13 picks, and a 105 quarterback rating for the season. Then in 2021, Kirk had 4,221 yards, 33 touchdowns, and only seven interceptions with a 103.1 rating. Not to say all of Kirk Cousins' success was on the shoulders of Kubiak, but it was very encouraging for his resume to see one of his products doing extremely well. Now we move on to the darker days. The Denver Broncos in 2022. Unlimited diarrhea. In 2022, Clint was brought back to the Denver Broncos as their passing game coordinator and quarterback coach under offensive coordinator Justin Outen and head coach Nathaniel Hackett. Following horrendous play calling struggles and offensive performance problems, Nathaniel Hackett relinquished play calling duties to, you guessed it, Clint Kubiak. At this point, Denver was already extremely disgruntled. Nathaniel Hackett was already deemed the worst head coach in the league. Russell Wilson looked like milk that got left out in the sun for a few days, and absolutely nobody on this team was set up for success. Deadass, the entire roster was set up for failure. Before Kubiak stepped up to call plays, the Broncos were averaging a disgustingly low 14 points per game over 9 games. After the change was made, Denver slightly jumped up to 19 points per game over eight games. I don't believe this was a play calling issue as much as a literal team problem. The Broncos just did not mesh well whatsoever and they had stupid high expectations. In 2023, Clint had a one year stint with the 49ers where he served as their passing game coordinator. As you probably know, most people assume this is where a lot of his skill came from. A year working under Kyle Shanahan's offense gave a lot of credibility to Clint Kubiak and we see him today orchestrating his current offense with flavor he extracted from theirs. Also, he made Brock Purdy look like a semi-decent quarterback, so that in itself is the greatest accomplishment from any coach of all time. Now we move on to the Saints. In the 2023 offseason, the Saints signed Clint Kubiak. 
A lot of people were not sure what to think of this signing due to the lack of offensive control Clinton's had over his career. Uh, we never really seen him mastermind his own offense all too much. Sure, he had his place, but as a full-on offensive coordinator, it isn't something we've seen him do a lot. Kubiak came in and changed Pete Carmichael's old, crusty-ass scheme drastically. With a run, play-action focus core, the balance has been fantastic. Getting rid of Doug Marone has certainly helped the offensive line as well, it seems. The thing about this offense right now is that we're not just blowing smoke. It's making NFL history. The Saints are just the third team in NFL history to score 30 plus points in the first half of each of their first two games. This has only been done by the 2001 Colts and the 1968 Raiders. The last time the Saints have scored 40 points in two back-to-back -back games was in 2009, and we know what happened to them. We have a combined 370 total rushing yards in our first two games, which is the third most in a pair of games to open a season in our franchise's history. We also scored points on every single one of our first 15 drives to open the season, which we would have been lucky to score once in five drives last season. Clint Kubiak's play calling and offensive game plans are very detailed and he has so much conviction for constantly changing looks. The creativity and use of skill is insane. Shahid is running deep. Taysom is playing every position. Chris Olave isn't getting thrown hospital balls. And Derek Carr is having no trouble finding the open man. In comparison to Pete's offense, this is an extreme breath of fresh air that I'm sure all New Orleans Saints fans have needed. The question I wanted to ask you guys is, where do the Saints go from here? Obviously, so many other teams in the NFL are seeing the performance that Kubiak's offense is putting on, and surely towards the back end of the season, Clint Kubiak will be getting head coach offers. If this continues, of course, not at a level of dropping 35 in every half, that's an unrealistic expectation, but if the offense still consistently puts up points, do the Saints consider offering Kubiak the keys to NOLA with a promotion and try to demote DA back to defensive coordinator? What do we do? Do you let the guy that has revamped your struggling offense and clearly has keen leadership walk? Or do you stick with Dennis Allen and try to find a new offensive coordinator protege? What do the Saints do? Let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, if this continues, I would consider maybe talking to Kubiak about potentially getting in the driver's seat. Thank you guys so much for watching. Just wanted to talk about our boy Clint for a little bit. Let me know if you like this kind of you know style of video and I'll see you all in the next one. Adios.